In today's video, we are going to talk about how to write Chrome and Firefox extensions, not only Chrome and Firefox, but for all other browsers, as well as uh, how to write user scripts that allow you both the extensions and these user scripts allow you to customize any website and uh, possibly even web scrape them. So um, let's see what we how we can do that in Svelte. As you know, Svelte is our favorite uh, UI framework slash compiler. And uh, how you write uh, Chrome extensions? First of all, writing Chrome extensions is much easier than you think. It's very, very easy to write Chrome extensions. And uh, all you have to do is write a manifest.json file and your uh, JavaScript um, file is anyway you're writing as part of your uh, Svelte application, you're generating a bundle.js. That's all there is to um, creating a Chrome, Firefox, IE, Edge, uh, Opera extension. So the same extension can be used in different browsers, all of these, because there is a cross-browser standard for it. And I'll link to that in my notes. Now you can customize any website to your liking, even, you know, um, scrape them using client-side web scraping. Uh, all you have to do is write the manifest.json, reference the script, and then write your uh, Swell tab. So let's see how to do that. Let's get started. Let me start. Yep, this is my um, VS Code. I'm going to, let me get rid of uh, anything left over from previously. Yeah, I just deleted that old directory. I'm going to create a new directory user scripts and I'm going to open it in VS Code. First thing I have to do is create a manifest dot json file but i will put that in the public directory because the relative paths of javascript and css make more sense that way so public slash manifest dot json this is just a json file which means it's a json object like this you give it a name i'm going to call my uh, plugin the, so what what i'm doing right now is writing a an extension Chrome, Firefox, etc. So let's give it a name. It'll be scrape it because I'm going to do some web scraping with it. Client side web scraping. So that's the name. Next, you give it some description. Uh, you can give whatever description. I'm just going to, you know, copy the description that I already have. So, um, yeah, example browser extension because it works for all different browser types, various different browser types. So this is, oh, sorry, one more thing. This is not JS. This is supposed to be JSON. So my bad, let me rename this. It should be JSON, manifest.json. Okay, next you give a version to your extension and I'm going to call 0.0.1. And quite importantly, you have to give manifest version. And there are various versions, one, two, and three, but I'm going to use two because version two is most cross browser and cross platform. And at this point, we are ready to specify content scripts. Content scripts are basically, uh, it's an array. It has one object inside and the keys of the object are JS, the JavaScript files, which is also an array, and then CSS, which is another array, and then finally, quite importantly, matches. Okay, so matches is another array, which is basically a, an array of patterns. So I am planning to, uh, because I don't want to get in trouble web scraping someone else's website, although I do that in my own time, but on this video, I'm going to try to uh, scrape my own website. So I have this site. I'm sorry. 
I have this site spinspy.com. It has this article page, uh, and I'm going to just uh, scrape this site and extract all these uh, the titles of these articles and their URLs. And I could probably get other information, whatever I want to scrape, I could scrape, right? I can scrape the summary if I want. So that's the in order to scrape, I'm going to inject some JavaScript into this page. How do I do that? I here in the manifest file, I say uh, matches e pattern in equals HTTPS colon spinspire.com slash star. I could say star, but I don't want to activate it on every page. I want to activate it only on articles page. So that's where I, that's what I specified. Now, in terms of JavaScript, but now let me just say I have a test.js file. And in terms of CSS, let's just say test.css file. Simple. Okay, so that's my manifest JSON. But of course, test.js and test.css don't exist. So let's create them. So test.js. And in this, I'm just going to say console log. Hello, browser extension. Okay. I am scrape it. Okay. All right, so this is, it's just going to console log it. And we also create, let's, oops, sorry. Let's create a file called test.css. And test.css, what it's going to do is, it's going to make these links uh, green. So if I inspect it, you will notice that uh, there is a, oh, sorry, this is, taking too much space. Yeah, there is a class on it, which is title link. Okay, so yeah, we will just uh, use this title link class and in which I will look for a tag. So I say when the class is title link, and you have an a tag inside that, make them green in color. Okay, so with this, our uh, Browser extension is ready. So we go into, let's see how it works in Chrome. I click this three dots and go to more tools and go to extensions. And I already have Tamper Monkey installed, uh, but I am going to click this load unpacked because I want to um, load my own um, my own browser extension. So I go to user scripts, public, and right there, there is manifest.json, which is not being shown, but you just click open. And now it has loaded the scraped extension with this version number. Here's my description. It has an ID and all that. Everything is in place. All I have to do is go to the target page and hit reload. So when I hit reload, um, well, I let's see what happened if uh, console here um, I see this as you can probably see there is hello browser extension I am scrape it there is an error but that is from the page itself so let's not worry about it but the console log showed up very nice uh, why did the CSS not apply so there is title link a color green and uh, let me check the manifest is test.css that's correct. So it should have worked. Did work for some reason. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it is even loading that. So if I go to sources and hard to find these things, but if I say control P test dot JS is there, but where is CSS? It's not there. That's interesting. Test.css. That's strange. Test.css. My CSS is not getting loaded for some reason. Okay, well. Such is life. Say lobby.
<laughs> Sometimes th things don't work the way you want them to work. Uh, let me empty cache and hard reload. Still didn't make it green for some reason. Um, let's inspect it. Oh, look, there is a reason. It is injected style sheet color green, but then something else is, uh, you know, overriding it. That's interesting. Why is the, so I can just make it important. Let's do that. I go to test.css and add important. Save it. Now, if I, even if I reload, it won't become important automatically. You have to go to the extension and hit this reload button. So hit the reload button, come back here, and now reload the page, and the links are green. So, so there, there you go. You have JavaScript injected and CSS injected by the extension. The same thing, let's try with Firefox also. So here's my Firefox, let me bring it over. Let me close everything. And click dot, dot, dot. And go to add-ons, where are the add-ons? Here, add-ons. And then you say, debug add-ons where are the debug ones you click on this gear and say debug add-ons and now you say load temporary add-on and this time you just double click on manifest.json and now it has loaded that i go back to the page and it's already working and if you go to the console it's um, let me just reload Hold on. just to make sure the so hello browser extension i'm scrape it and the links are green so it's working in Firefox as well. As you saw that the same manifest JSON and the same CSS and same JS worked in both the browsers. Okay, but of course we are here to learn to how to do this in Svelte. So let's do that. So at this point, I'm going to go back to my manifest.json and get rid of this test.js, um, etc. So let's delete this, let's delete this, save it. And these test files also we can delete. We don't need them anymore. Instead, let's use npx dig it, Svelte.js template, and target the current directory. So we are basically trying to use npx dig it to, to initialize a Svelte.js template project in the current directory, but it refuses to do that because the current directory is not empty. So I have to use the minus minus force option so i did that and now i have the template in the current directory and it simply used the so reuse the same public directory it added some extra files in there although it did not delay delete the manifest.json thankfully okay at this point we can go and delete i, I don't want to keep most of this stuff so the i don't want to keep global.css Fav icon is okay. Uh, I will delete global.css. I will go into src main.js. I don't want to supply any props, so delete those. And I go into app.svelte and pretty much delete everything. Okay. And at this point, I just want to uh, target something within the DOM. Right. So I am going to say script. Let's add something to the DOM. So let's add a div and give it a class of user script. Or, uh, add an A tag. And within the A tag, let's add a button. And the button is going to say scrape it exclamation sign. All right, so let's save this. Now, why did I give it a class? You'll see in a second. Let's. Uh, compile this if i before i compile i have to do npm install or yarn install in my case because I, I prefer yarn and to test it i could just run dev and that's local running on localhost 5000 i can click that and i got a button called scrape it fine problem is um, 
this is not running as a as an extension. So I go into um, sorry. Oh, it automatically loaded. The scraped part happened apparently. Something is wrong. Let me make sure that I don't have an old extension sitting around. So yeah, violent monkey is still enabled. So let's disable that and now re reload. Okay, so that's better. So that scraped button was coming from violent monkey. In any case, um, I need to go to add-ons manager and in the scrape it add-on, we have to reload it. So where's the reload button? I was hoping that I will see a reload button. Permissions last updated allowed. Run in private windows permission. Hmm. Why am I not seeing the reload button here? Uh, debug add ons, yes. Oh, there is a reload button. So, yes, that's what I should be hitting. Reload. And, okay. Obviously, this doesn't work because. I, my, my manifest.json file is incorrect. So let's mess with that first. It has nothing in, in it. So for JavaScript, because my, uh, relative to manifest.json, there is the build directory right in there and then bundle.js is right next to it. So I will say bundle, sorry, build slash bundle.js. Similarly, for CSS, I'll say build slash bundle.css. I save this and come back to Firefox add-ons manager. Please close that. Go to debug runtime and hit reload. When I do that, um, don't do I see effect of that? Not really. The part of it could be that there is no CSS and it's not placing the scraped button at the top. So let's uh, do something to make that happen. We go into the app.svelte and add some style. Style and say that user script class uh, position is fixed. Fixed as in you can keep it in one part of the uh, viewport. And then top is zero pixels and right edge is aligned with the right edge of the button and that's also at zero pixel once we do those things let's see what happens first let's hit build so that we have a, an optimized build at this point there is a bundle.css and bundle.js both so we go back into firefox debugging hit reload come back and boom there you go you have this scrape it button so this is at this point, you have your um, extension showing some effect. Also, uh, these styles are obviously applying. That's why it's on the top right corner. Good. Uh, but now, what I want to do is in my um, extension, I want to scrape this page. I want to extract the titles of these articles and their URLs. So how do I do that? For this, I'm going to need a script tag. And I could do this in many, many ways. I could uh, start with an on mount, uh, go get the data, but that's not the most elegant way. In my opinion, the most elegant way is if I want to attach a downloader, okay? Uh, Let's, let's do it the less elegant way first. Okay, I'm just going to say document dot uh, query selector all, and then we say okay, get me this. As you know, earlier we checked that the when we inspect this element, there is a class on it, and the class is called title link, and the a tag is inside that class. So I could say query selector all dot title dash link and a tags. This will give you all the links. 
and we could print them. Okay. Uh, or so let's just do that. Console log print links. Save it. Once we do that and go to console and I'm going to so ignore this error. This is coming from the, the page, so don't pay attention. Let's reload the extension. And now I got the links. The node list is showing up. So this is the a node list of A tags. Okay. As I'm hovering on them, they are being highlighted on the left. So it's already working within the context of the page. Uh, what I want to do is I want to create, uh, I want to ma manipulate this A tag such that it will become a download. It will allow, it will become a link that allows me to download uh, the data. So here's what I mean. Um, I want to generate a CSV file. So I, I can first let me convert this query, uh, this node list into an array that I can do very easily with array dot from. So now I have a true blue array as opposed to earlier what I had was a node list, which is a little harder to manipulate. Then, so with this, I can now do links dot map. Uh, so each link I'm going to map to its title and its href, which means create an array. Mapping the link to it, an array. First element of the array is link dot text content, and the second element is going to be link dot href. Okay, so we map this. And this becomes, uh, let's say, let's call this rows. These are the rows. Okay. If I now console log the rows, you'll see what what I mean. Why I want rows. Rows, rows. Save it, reload the extension. Once you do that, uh, let me read. There you go, see rows. The rows ha is an array of array. The first element is the title, second element is the URL. Excellent. So I want to now turn this into CSV data. Okay, so how do I do that? I do that by uh, I can use map again. So you can say rows dot map and convert. Uh, I want to put double quotes on both sides of it and comma between them. So, so I say for each row, row map it to uh, So row, I want to map it to row dot map again, I think. Yes, map. And then in there, iterate over each column. And then the column will put double quotes before it and after it. So like this, double quotes, double quotes, inside the between the two, the column itself. Okay. And then between these, I want to join them with I want to join them with a comma between them. So all these columns they are getting mapped. And now eventually they will get joined with a comma. So this will print the first column with double quotes around it and then comma and then the second column. Okay. Let's see if, what it what this generates. Let's say const text equal to let's print the text. So reload and reload this page. And now you got text. Text is an array of six. It has double quotes, free web development training, comma, the second double quote, and then and so on and so forth. So now these six elements need to be joined together with a new line. So I further join them with a new line. So, so to get only the text, I have to say 
join with new line. So let's try it again. Reload. Come back. Refresh. Okay, now I got actual text with this stuff. It's better, right? So this is looking like a CSV file, isn't it? Okay, let's do that. Let's keep going. But this doesn't have a header, the first row header, the URL. Like this should say title, and then this should have a header of URL. So to give it a header, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my rows is really uh, let's call it const data equal to um, title comma url so i am adding an extra and i'm prefixing the entire array with one extra element and then here comes the entire array of rows okay now we do that for to data instead of to rows. Once you do that, back in here, if I reload and reload the page, I got title and URL first, and then the rest of it. So that that's kind of nicer. So that's your CSV file. As you can see, this this looks a lot like a CSV file, doesn't it? The the issue is. How do I download the CSV file? I don't, I don't want to just print the CSV file in the console. I want to make it downloadable. And that can be done quite easily using a blob. So we create a new blob. A blob, this blob API, you can Google this, but basically it takes two things. First, an array of strings, and second, an options object. In the options object, I give type the MIME type, type equal to text slash CSV. And then the this thing, uh, blah, this takes an array of strings. So I'm just giving it one, one string, which is text. Okay. And that give, generates a blob. Now, you may not realize this, but you can use blobs and the URL API to generate files, downloadable files within your browser. So it's quite quite impressive let's see you create this blob this blob contains your C the contents of the csv file and now we, we create a url url dot create object url and give it the blob and this generates a url let's call it a url and now all you have to do is inject that url into, into this a tag and this is where the issue arises there are many ways to do that one way is to use the this binding, sorry, sorry, other way around, bind this equal to something, right? Like that. But that's not my favorite way. My, my favorite way is to use actions in this case. So let's say use colon. Now, obviously, look up uh, on svelte.dev what, uh, what actions are and how to use them. So you say use colon, name of the action. We will call it scrape action. Okay. Now you just write a function called function scrape and it takes two parameters, the DOM node and the params. Now params, uh, in this case, we will have no params because there's no equal to sign and not, no stuff inside that. But if we had that, then params would be relevant. So create that function, move all of this code into that function. Okay. And, um, at the very end, instead of printing it, you just say node.href is equal to this URL. And that should be it. Then it will activate, it will manipulate this A tag. Let's do one more thing. Let's say, give it, give a name. If I do it like this, it won't have a name. Uh, the download will have no name. Let's give a name to the download. We'll call it download equal to data.csv. Save it. Let's see what, I, what it looks like now reload we reload the page so now it's not printing anything but when i hover on this do you see on the bottom left side <coughs> of the browser you see a blob url if i click on it look you have chosen to open data.csv open with 
LibreCalc. So this is a, it's basically opening my CSV file with my Excel uh, replacement, which is LibreCalc, my spreadsheet program. So I, if I click OK, it's going to look, it's going to open this. And now I have the CSV file with all the script data that I wanted. This is a huge success, I think. So now there are some problems. One is if I scroll down and I have more, as I'm scrolling down, more articles are being added, right? And now if I hit scrape, I still get the same data, the limited data with only seven rows. I don't get all the new rows that have been added. So let's fix that. To fix that, what we have to do is we have to generate uh, the download every time we hover on it. Um, so <laughs> you might think that hover is an actual event, but it's not. I used to think that hover was an, an event. There is no event called hover. Um, there's only CSS pseudo class called colon hover. In terms of event, there is an event called mouse enter. So that's what we are going to use. So we will say node dot add event listener and we will create a function called listener and sorry listener and the name of the event is mouse enter okay so that's the event so let's uh, do that at, at the very end but wrap this whole thing into the listener function function listener and move all of the code into it so we got and we are finally adding the event listener but because this is a an action actions are supposed to also clean up after themselves so they are they return a cleanup function and the cleanup function is going to is supposed to do the opposite of what the action is doing the action is adding an event listener the cleanup function should remove it so node dot remove event listener and then give it the function which is listener function. So that's the one it will remove. So this way, action when the action attaches, it does one thing. Oops, delete this extra thing. When the action attaches, it attaches the ad, it adds the event listener. When it detaches, which it will run this function, uh, and that function basically removes the event listener. So let's see if this works. Uh, so what will happen is every time I will hover, I will on that button. It will recompute the entire blob and reattach a new URL. So let's see if this works. I go into the this reload and I go to the top. Let's reload the page, start afresh. When I do it for the very first time, I should get the same seven rows. Yes, cancel that. If I ro if I scroll down a few times and load some more articles now hit scrape it this time i should have more yes look there are 35 37 of these so let's say okay and oops there is a bug i found a bug on row 29 hiding user history and um, so what's happening is there is a double quote within the um, the title of the article and that's causing some trouble with the formatting of the csv so double quote is a problem. So let's fix that problem. The way we do that is we have to, where's the columns? Yes, this one. We have to escape the double quotes within the column. So the way we do that is we take the column and then say replace all occurrences of a double quote with two double quotes. So that's that's a formatting rule for CSV files. That if you want to include, if your CSV file is, is delimited with double quotes, right? But you want to include a double quote inside the value of a CSV column, then you just repeat the double quote, two double quotes, okay? And that should work. Let's see if that works. Come back, reload the extension. Reload the page, scroll down so that I have that problematic row included. Let's keep scrolling down quite a bit so that I have as many rows as 
and now hit scrape it. Click OK. Click OK. And this time looks like it did work. Row 29. Hey, look at that. It, it worked. So I fixed the bug. That's good. So at this point, you can see this can be very useful. So now, I want to talk, before I proceed, I want to talk about the benefits of client-side web scraping, not server-side web scraping. I, I was trying to scrape a site, and I will not tell you which site it was because I don't want to get in trouble. So I was trying to scrape a site on the server side using Deno. So what I was doing was I was making HTTP calls to that website. It's a public site. Um, I, I would parse the uh, HTML using JS DOM on Deno, and then I would, was extracting information from it. But then what happened was that website uses uh, Cloudflare or some such um, service that tries to prevent my Deno script from uh, scraping their site. It detected some pattern and somehow caught me scraping their website. So that's why server-side scraping could be problematic. But guess what? I can do client-side scraping. And then I did, did, I used this method that I'm showing you right now to scrape that site on the client side in the browser. And it works perfectly. And Cloudflare or whoever it was that was trying to detect bot, bot action could not detect it because I was using it, uh, use, doing it in a real browser with a real human, human being sitting in front of it. So that's a great benefit of client-side web scraping. So let's go further. At this point, our, our um, Chrome extension or the Firefox extension is working pretty well. But now I want to get into the part two of this video where I am going to show you how to um, how to turn this into a user script. But before we go any further, please subscribe to this channel, like this video, and put all your questions in the comments. Uh, I will have uh, a lot of information about my approach, about the code, and even the code itself, everything linked in the show notes. So please look at the video description. Okay, let's get into part two, which is user scripts. User scripts are basically very similar to the, to the content script that I am showing, but you don't need to write your own extension. You can just, you have to install one of the famous extension, either Tamper Monkey or Violent Monkey. Um, of course, I know Violent Monkey is a weird name, but it's, it's the better one of the two extensions because it's fully open source. Tamper Monkey is not open source, but in case of Chrome and Chromium, I had to use Tamper Monkey. So, because somehow Violent Monkey doesn't work very well. So let's uh, see how they work. What you have to do is, um, you install the extension, like I said, Tamper Monkey or Violent Monkey. Uh, in case of Firefox, you can use Violent Monkey. In case of Chrome and Chromium, you have to use Tamper Monkey. Then after you've enabled it, uh, let me, yeah. You click this extensions button, click on Tamper Monkey, and then this shows up, you click on the dashboard, go to the dashboard, which is this. And now you can install or create your own um, user scripts. What are user scripts? You just click this plus button. And now this is called the metadata header for a user script. And this is where the code goes, okay? I'm not going to write code here. You can, of course, so learn, uh, see the metadata. You give it a name, you give it a namespace. In my case, it will be my website, spinspire.com. That makes sense, right? Uh, give it a version, description, and most important thing is the match. So in this case, it already used the page that I was last visiting, and it put the match there. So this is the key part of it. You, and you can put multiple matches. You can also give it some grants. In my case, I don't have to give any grants, but uh, you could. Now, I don't want to write my script like this. I want to use the uh, rollup. So to do that, I what I will do is I will go to my um, Svelte application. And I have to, it, as you can see, the bundle.js, this is the bundle.js. It has no header. So I will create the header. Um, 
I'll go to my app.svelte src folder and create a new file called metadata.js. And in that metadata.js, I can pretty much copy paste this metadata, but I have the metadata in another file, so I'll use that. So let's see. I go and paste my metadata. So the, here it is. My user script name is scrape it. It's, here's the namespace. Match is already specify.com slash articles. Version 1.0 author is me and uh, description and so on and so forth. Run at is useful after the document DOM has been fully loaded. That's when run at. Okay, so you I put this in metadata.js and in order to prefix it at the beginning of my bundle.js, I go into my rollup. So rollup, let's go to rollup config.js. And in there, I have to add, in the top of my configuration, I add another um, property in output. Under output, I add banner. And for banner, I say, I basically load that file, metadata dot. So, uh, Dot JS. So to get, do that, I have to say fs dot. Oops, it always does this. So banner fs dot read file synchronous sync. And then I have to find, figure out its path. So I do that with path uh, path class, I guess. Dot uh, path dot. What is it? I'm cheating. Hmm. Path dot join, yes. So you say path dot join. Take the current directory dir name, and then add to it meta data dot js. Oh, add src slash metadata. So src slash metadata dot js. So you do that, and now you should be, so now the value of banner is equal to whatever this guy is returning, okay? Uh, so there is a comma expected, I think, yeah, the, it needs a comma here, okay? So let's import fs and path. So import fs from fs and import path from path. Okay, so once we do these things, I'll have to restart my dev. Oh, it looks like port 5000 is taken. I have to stop that. Hold on. Let's make, let's try to run this devs. Okay, port 5000 is working now. At this point, if I look at my bundle.js, look, my bundle.js has the banner at, at the top, the header, the metadata in, at the beginning. Okay, this is good. So uh, I will be able to install this user script. So I go to, in order to install a user script, it's already on port 5000, uh, localhost 5000, right? So in order to install it from there, I have to go to s utilities and I can just uh, copy paste the URL, which is http colon slash slash localhost 5000 build slash bundle dot js. Okay, so I hit, hit install and it has basically downloaded this JS file and also added the header. I do have to click install, but I already have that scrape it button um, in here. Oh, I don't actually, which is, I guess, okay with me. How come the scrape it button is not there? Let me hit, yeah, if I re hit reload and Yes, so now the script button is there. So in order to not get confused between the user script and the extension, I should disable the extension. Okay, I disabled it, reload, and now the script button is gone. This way, I know that it's the user script doing it. So it hit install. And once I do that, now if I reload the page, the button should come back, but it didn't. Why? Because the CSS is not available. So that's the second problem. And there's a very simple solution. In order to, to right now what it is doing is it, it's 
in loaded the bundle.js, but there is no CSS. It didn't load that. And user scripts are not very good about that. So what we have to do, therefore, is try to include the CSS styles also into the same bundle.js. And there is, it's very easy. All you have to do is go into rollup.config.js, find the Svelte plugin, this one, right? And then in the beginning, outside uh, the in the options outside the compiler option set emit css to false that's it and at this point you don't have to do this so, so uh, this css plugin is not needed so comment that out and okay so it keeps a uh, restarting new one so let me just kill this uh, hit dev again now what will happen is that bundle.js now includes the emitted css okay once you do that let's uh, somehow get uh, if i if i reload it's not working so i have to go and tell tamper monkey to reload this extension so how do i do that i can click on this click on temper monkey and check for user script updates uh, it says no, no update. Uh, that doesn't work. I have to go back into the Tamper Monkey extension and find a way to reload uh, settings, install scripts. Let me see if my install script is present. Yeah, it's there. So how do I reload it? I check the checkbox and say trigger update. I hit start. Let's see if that updates it. It still doesn't update it. Well, that's a problem. Uh, how do I make... Oh, I see the scraped button, but it's in the wrong place. I do a hard reload. The scraped button is on, in the bottom of the page, but not. it's not applying the CSS to it. Um, let's do a dev again. Uh, yeah, we can do a restart or terminate it, and then dev. just trying to get my extension to reload, and it hasn't reloaded. Let me see if there is some other way, trigger update. Last update is still three minutes back, so that's a problem. I don't think that's what, uh, so it's not recognizing a change. So let's do this because it's not working. I'm going to uninstall it, hit, hit uh, delete, and then go to utilities and reinstall it. Okay, so maybe that will help. So this is my, now I also want to see if the, uh, the position fixed oh okay that's that's a bigger problem the emit css is not including the emit css false is not including the css in the js file so let's fix that first okay so i'm saying emit css false that should have worked but it is clearly not working why would that be? If I go to bundle.js and search for um, position fixed. Oh, right there. It's there. Look, this is very much there. So good. My emit CSS false is working, right? But, oh, I haven't hit install yet. I need to do that. So position is, this is not working. This is not correct. So I have to cancel this and I will hit install again. It's not loading the new value. You see? So let me hit install. Let's see if that will. And it's reloading this already. Huh. Interesting. Reload. Oh, finally. There it is. The scraped button at the top. And the rest of it you have already seen. I can just keep scrolling and once enough articles have been loaded into the page, 
I can hit scrape it and that causes a download. There it is. Data24.csv. Apparently I've done it 24 times. And if I double click and open this, I got all these rows. So this is now working in Chrome as a user script instead of as uh, as a custom extension. Uh, obviously the same thing we can do in Firefox. Same way, let's debug, uh, let's remove this uh, extension and go to our add-ons. Uh, I have already installed um, the add -on. The violent monkey it's disabled, so let's enable it and go to the page, reload, click on. Oh, uh, it's already uh, doing some of these things, so it's doing this. Uh, let's go to violent monkey, open dashboard, delete, remove the new user script, reload, so it's gone. Good. Let's go to the violent monkey dashboard again. Click on plus, install from URL. The URL I will give is HTTP localhost. By the way, this doesn't have to be localhost. Obviously, this could be an S3 bucket. It could be a Firebase hosting setup. It could be your static site setup, anything. Slash build slash bundle.js. I click OK. And I confirm installation. And when I reload this page, I get the scrape it button. So, and the scrape it button behaves the same way. I can just click and download. And there it is, all the scraped data. So, um, there's one last thing that I want to show you. If I hit build, the optimized build, that is, I will lose my header metadata. So, now if I go and open bundle.js, it has optimized the whole thing and it removed that comment. So that's a problem. Uh, fortunately, there is a way to fix that. Uh, the, the comment is being removed because we are running in production mode and we are running Terser, therefore. And Terser basically removes all comments. To fix that, you can give a special configuration to Terser. And that is this. Obviously, I, um, you basically write a little bit of code, not a whole lot, and you put it as an option to Terser, this. So what, what we are doing here is we are giving options to Terser in which we are giving it a format object, which has a callback for comments. Format object has a callback only for comments, not the other ones. And what it does is it basically, whenever it sees user script double equals then it starts preserving comments. And when it is preserving comments, it simply takes in a value and returns that value without removing it. And when then it's looking for the ending. Uh, so as you know, the opening, this, this is the opening line, this is the closing line. So it starts preserving comment at this point and then stop preserving comments at this point. So that's what we are trying to do. And that is doable. All this code will obviously be available to you in show notes. Okay. So once you do that, uh, bundle.js will start keeping this information. If I hit build, it will optimize the build, but not delete. So you see, it optimized the build. So one single line minification, etc., is on, but it did not remove the user script at the, the header metadata. And uh, that makes it all work. So that was... Uh, my demo of showing you how easy it is to write uh, Chrome and Firefox and IE Edge and Opera extensions. Browser extensions are very easy to write. All you have to do is write a manifest.json and then uh, supply some content scripts. You can those content scripts obviously could be compiled uh, Svelte programs, your bundle.js. So this is one way to achieve it if you wanted to create a special purpose. Um, extension but if you want to create lots of uh, general purpose user scripts then you can do that using uh, you can install them using temper monkey or violent monkey uh, but the method of writing your 
uh, Svelte application is the same. You just have to make sure that you have a metadata at the top and that metadata is preserved. All right. So that was our Chrome Firefox extension and user scripts. I hope you learned something. See you in the next video.